morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Sandy Bottom Homestead. I cannot believe it is almost August. Can you? Seems like time's flying. I need it to slow down just a little bit. But uh, this is what we're going to be planting or starting. Well, actually both in the month of August. So um, it's going to be another busy month before I get started. I got to let these ladies out. They're having a late start today. I don't think they're very happy. Look at them. They just hungry. So this is a little bit more complicated as other months because there's seed starting and then there's planting all at the same time. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the planting portion and then I'll get into the seed starting. Actually, I take that back. I'm going to do the planting, the direct sowing, and then the seed starting. Um, I think that's the only way my brain can kind of manage this. First and foremost, we've got this bed here of the buckwheat and it is starting to flower here. So what we're going to do is right around the second to third week in August, we are going to plant our Brussels sprouts in this bed. So the goal is to come out here probably in about two weeks once these flowers really come up and they start doing their thing. And then we're going to clear cut this cover crop. Again, this is buckwheat and we'll just chop it drop it, get the soil ready, and then just kind of move on from there. We'll probably give it about a week to get nice and settled, and then we'll start planting the Brussels sprouts. Well, that is if my Brussels sprouts can rebound from the mishap that we saw in the last video, but we're gonna work on that. Uh, one way or another, we're gonna get Brussels sprouts in the ground. Doesn't matter to me how we do it, it's just gotta get done. So. That's what this bed will be. This will be the Brussels sprout bed for this year. Um, one other thing we're gonna do. So in true fashion, I said in previous videos and previous years, in July, my tomatoes will kick the bucket. That they have done. They are starting to really suffer. So what we'll do is we're gonna come out here, we'll clear this bed out, uh, probably within a week or so. And then I will put in bush beans in the front row and I'm probably gonna drop some squash in the back row. And then we're just gonna let them go from there. Um, the goal for this bed really is to hopefully push it one more season or one, one more round into summer. And then in the fall, we may put a quick, quick crop in. We may not. Um, I don't know exactly what I wanna do. I'm still trying to formulate a plan, but this way we can at least be ready to put it to bed and rest for the uh, winter. The only issue I have with that is that bed and this bed get all of the sun in the summer, in the winter. So it would be really, really nice to have that and enjoy, you know, having these crops, these beds produced for the winter. But in the name of the game, sometimes you just got to sacrifice. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to sacrifice that, uh, that bed for the winter. Um, it's not a big deal but it is just, it's just part of it. So this corn, it's struggled through the drought. Um, we're still waiting for it. If, if it empties out in time, we're going to try and put in a crop of cabbages into this bed. Um, at this point, I'm 90% sure that that's what we want to do. So hopefully if we look at it here, you know, we're starting to get some corns going. I don't know what's going to happen with it. You know, I'm still trying to learn corn. So we see some promising things and some not promising, but a couple weeks, this should be Dunsky. And then uh, probably around the third week of August, we'll drop our uh, cabbages in. You can see we've got three weeks, four weeks to get everything ready, essentially. Um, this bed right here, is our corn and i was going to say something i was going to plant there but i'm not planting it there it's the next bed over which by the way doesn't that popcorn just look good y'all i mean the uh the rain has really just exploded the growth on it so i'm extremely happy about that and the good thing about this crop while we're looking at it is as it gets higher it will actually cause some of the shade on the bed behind it that buckwheat bed which will be the brussels sprout bed so it'll give it some some break from the sun and we won't have to you know stress as much about it 
bed's not gonna be planted. I miscalculated. Um, we're not gonna worry about that. These are the sweet potatoes. They're still growing. Temporarily got my months mixed up. What can I say? It happens. Um, so that's what we're planting during the month of um, August. Now we've got to talk about what we're starting. Oh, I take that back. When this gets harvested, we're going to put our rutabagas in that bed. So we're going to direct sow our rutabagas into that bed after it gets harvested, but it hasn't even started to pollinate yet. So we're kind of in limbo. Um, I'm going to direct sow half a bed of rutabaga and I'm going to start seed for half of it too. So we're going to start the seed um, probably in a week we'll start the seed, but rutabagas are different where you don't really want them to grow. My typical rule is eight weeks in the seed start pot, six to eight weeks, but we'll just say eight weeks and then eight weeks in the ground before your first frost so they can get comfortable. And this goes for everything. So, um, you know, if it doesn't happen, fine, but we're going to try and get this set up so it will be as smooth of a transition as possible. So we'll do a half and half. I want to just see how they grow better and see, you know, if it makes any difference in anything like that. But then you got to get into the seed starting bit. We've already sowed our parsnips, so we're not worried about those. I was just coming to check and see if I see any movement at all. And I don't see anything growing as of yet, which isn't surprising. Uh, parsnips take a really long time. So we're just gonna let that roll. We're gonna start getting into some delicate crops this month. Um, one thing we're gonna start probably around in a week or so is gonna be lettuces. So we'll start our first round of lettuce, okay? It's really important that you hear that correctly. Our first round of lettuce. So if we started around August, um, let's just say August 7th to keep it simple. We're gonna pretend there's 28 days in each month. Um, by September 7th to 14th, we can probably get it into the ground. So we're gonna start our first round, but at the same time, then we're gonna direct sow some more and see how that works. So we're gonna kind of, you know, dance around that a little bit. Um, we're also gonna start our collards. So we'll do that around the 20, no, probably around the seventh as well. We'll probably do our collards and then we're gonna do our kales as well, as well, as well. Listen to me go. So we'll do that as well. Um, as I look into the garden though, the whole wild garden situation, I'm totally eliminating that out of the fall planting completely. So that puts me down by four beds. Um, so I need to really evaluate what we're doing here and how we're using our beds. So one thing that we can do, and the more and more I think about it, uh, I didn't think about it until now, is we may have to adjust a little bit. So I may actually have to hold off on planting more squash so I can use this bed. Um, we'll see how it goes. If I do, what I would do, because this bed has been used a lot, the tomato bed back here, then we can use this one for a shorter crop that's gonna be harvested like our rutabagas. You know, last year I added this bed, so I'm not really overly worried about letting it rest too much. We still have it in plan to let it rest because it's grown onions in it and then corn this year, and then we'll do something else. So that's gonna be three hard seasons on this bed. So we do wanna let it rest to some extent, but we're still gonna plant it. But because of those four beds that are kind of jacked up, we're gonna to have to do something different and I'm not sure exactly yet. I'm probably gonna build my garden plan live on YouTube in the coming weeks. So um, I'll put that on there and I've got that pl the planter app that I use so it's real visual. So we'll do that. But um, the lettuces, the collards and kale. So we'll be starting kale as well. Um, and we'll get those going and see the thing with kale is you don't need to start a lot if you like if you live in a more southern area because uh, it'll just grow throughout the winter we'll have kale all winter long um, so we don't need to have a whole bed of kale so where i typically crop all of these beds um, usually in the fall and even into the spring it's not as much monocrop there's a lot of mixing occurring because we can fit 
you know, for instance, let's just say we took this sweet potato bed. And um, I mean, if you remember last year, I had a row of kale in the back and then I had other things up in the front. So we can do that again. And uh, it, it allows much more freedom in your garden space. I think what I want to do is I might put it in the back bed over there. We'll just have to wait and see. I've got to go back and look at my plans and see which beds have been running the longest and then incorporate that into my plan to give them a break. So we'll do that too, but uh, we may start, I'm trying to think of anything else. We may do some more onions just as a fail safe since we had our little mix up, right? And then when I mean our mix up, our shade house fell and just the whole thing was a mess. So we'll do that. But we also got to think about um, the greenhouse, when and how we're going to plant that. It's a later planting because it's so hot in there. And uh, one other seed I really did, I did forget and I am going to monocrop is uh, broccoli. So we're definitely going to do broccoli and we'll probably start that in the first week of August. So if you had cauliflower, they fall into the same time frame. So we'll try and get that in because that means if we start them in the beginning of August, then by the middle of September, we can get them in the ground and get them going. Which means we're running out of time to start building shade structures. So that's going to be coming up too. We're going to be doing a lot of shade structures out here to get things comfortable for fall. And um, we'll be removing them and adding them and all that stuff. So definitely want to tune in for that if that's something you're interested in. Uh, this is the time in which I start to really worry about the heat that we're coming in. Today is not too bad, but you never know what's going to happen. So we'll see what happens here. But um, that's my plan for the month of August. So lettuce. Um, rutabagas, cabbages, if you want to do more cabbages, but broccoli, um, and all the others, I can't remember, oh, collards, kale, all that stuff. We're holding off on our spinach for right now. So we're not putting it, it's still too hot for that. It just won't germinate when it's this hot. And um, we're just gonna see what empties out of the beds and how things work. For instance, have any more parsnip seeds. So if we get a row that doesn't germinate or something in here, then we can definitely take advantage of that and plant something in its place. So we're gonna just kind of, we're gonna be opportunistic about that. And I also have to consider these pots over here that I've let go this year. Um, we're definitely gonna be putting some kind of crop in there. I like to put uh, broccolis in them, cabbages, stuff like that. I'll put multiple lettuces in them if I have to. I don't really like putting spinach in them. They're just too small, the plants are. So I don't really do that, but there's a lot of different things you can do. So we're just looking and waiting to add to that. But um, August is a very busy month. There's a lot going in and out, and we also have to keep up with our pest treatments, our harvesting, our fertilization, and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah. I know you guys feel the pain. So hopefully this helps you guys getting going into August because once August comes and September comes and September is a really big planting and direct sowing month. So there's going to be a lot of that coming up in September. And um, we, I'm starting to look forward to taking a little bit of a break. So we'll see how that goes. Goodbye.